For 30 years, European countries have developed and improved offshore wind technology. As it enters the offshore wind market, the U.S. is now playing catch-up. Right now, a lot of our supply chain comes from Europe. That's only natural as we build up this American industry. So there will be manufacturing. There is also skilled labor that we need and lots of it. In 2022, the Biden administration set an ambitious goal of reaching 30 gigawatts of offshore wind power by 2030. In Massachusetts, we have a climate goal to get to net zero by 2050. Offshore wind is definitely going to be part of that. We need people who are trained in the wind industry who can do installations. We need ships, we need ports. So there's a lot of challenges that need to be addressed. Developers are facing supply chain issues, increasing material costs and higher interest rates, leading some to try to renegotiate power contracts or cancel them altogether. We've been hit by litigation, by, you know, supply chain issues. We've, we've done all this during COVID. We can actually deliver this, this technology here, and it makes so much sense. According to a 2023 study by the University of California, offshore wind development could employ nearly 390,000 workers in the United States by 2050. Massachusetts State Senator Mark Pacheco is encouraged by those predictions. Right now, the economy is having a problem finding people to take these jobs. And so that's the big challenge actually that's ahead of us. But the director of the Windstar Center at UMass Lowell, Christopher Nizrecki, says there's no time to waste in the fight against climate change. If we're to replace current energy consumption with renewables, uh, we can't build enough. We've got a long way to go to achieve net zero. Right now, I would argue that we're not doing things fat quickly enough. And Bristol Community College is the only school in the U.S. offering an offshore uh, to certificate and associate's degree program. Right, there's a variety of other training programs offered as well, but as you heard the senator say, the problem is finding enough workers. We hear that a lot. That's Chronicle for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Anthony Everett. And I'm Shana Seymour. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.